Hello Zugo fans, my name's David. I did a video this past uh, summer, towards the end of summer, on my bike and it was called One Year Later. So now I have an upgrade and this is kind of like a part two to my video. I talked to Zugo and I asked them if I could upgrade my bike to a class four. I wanted to do that. My bike was out of warranty and I wanted to bring my bike to the next level. And they said absolutely it can be done. I have to sign a waiver to release them of any incidences that could be caused by bringing the bike up to a class four. So what they offered me is uh, I could send my display in and they could reprogram it for $126 and then they would refund me $26 but you also have to pay for shipping so it would be about $99 plus shipping about $10 to ship it well I asked them uh, could I keep my old display and just purchase the display outright and they said yes you could and so I did that I opted to do uh, purchase the display and it cost me $125 plus shipping I'm just going to open the box up and show everyone what comes in the box and uh, of course I will do an update video on how my experiences were. When you open the box it looks like everything is well bagged. Um, looks like the display comes in a bubble bag and it has the protective screen on it to protect the front of the, the display and it's basically a bolt-on. There's two wires it looks like. There's a, a green and blue and you can't get them mixed up. So let's put that aside. Looks like what else came in the box? Uh, looks like we got a new controller. Uh, I'm not sure if I need that or not, but looks like that's what came with it. And again, it has a color blue connector on it. So there's only, looks like three wires that you have to mess with. Looks like there's a couple of clamps for the back of the display. Uh, looks like there's some rubber grommets for to protect your handlebars when you clamp the display on. It looks like this goes actually into the bracket itself. Yeah, it does. It goes into the bracket itself and the other end goes into the display and that protects it so it doesn't slide around on your handlebars and also protects your handlebars themselves. And it looks like we get four screws. And that's so it. So I installed my display and I ran into a problem. Uh, when I would turn it on, it would boot up and as soon as it got to the uh, home screen, it would shut down. I tried this a few times and I contacted uh, Zugo to let him know that it was repeating itself as far as boot up, turn off, boot up, turn off. And they said, well, we'll go ahead and send you another display just in case something was wrong with the display that they sent me. Well, I received it yesterday and I opened the box and inside the box was a display and a new um, power control unit, PCU. And so I'm, I got on the horn with Sugo and I said, I well, I received a display, but I also received a brand new power control unit. And I didn't, I didn't pay for that and I'm not sure what do you want me to do with this? And they said, well, um, just in case your power control unit, uh, the firmware in it is old because my bike is over a year old, they said it might need to be upgraded. It might not be the display. It might be the control unit itself. So I said to them, I said, so you guys just sent me this? And they said, yes, we did. We want to make sure that, you know, you get your bike up and running. And I couldn't believe it. I was just blown away. I mean, this is not a cheap unit. And they took it upon themselves to satisfy me and send me this unit so I wouldn't have to go through any more headaches. So here I am uh, removing the seat and getting ready to install the PCU. Um, so I went on their site. They told me he sent me a link to their site to let me know how to replace it and put it back on. The control unit. Well, I reviewed the video, and it's an awesome video. It's very in-depth. Uh, it tells you exactly how to disconnect it, put it back on, um, wire it up, and they tell you all the, you know, everything to look for as far as the wires and to, what to be concerned of. No problem with the video. However, 
I am making a small change uh, to the video. background is Precision Machining. I've been a quality manager, quality director in Precision Machining for approximately 30 years. And I understand all aspects of machining from outside processing, like plating, powder coating, anodizing, chromating, heat treat, whatever. Uh, to the actual machine end of components, manufacturing, electronic assemblies, all of that kind of stuff, jazz. So I don't need to go into that, but the reason I'm saying this is because I understand this component. This component is an extruded uh, piece of material. It comes in about a 12 foot bar. It is one piece and they chop saw it off on either end and they put an end cap on it and they assemble it. It is a sealed unit. It looks like it has a foam seal around here. It has a foam seal and it looks like it's silicone sealed on the inside where the wires are. So there's no air uh, getting into this unit. This unit um, dissipates heat through these heat sinks, through these fins. It's an entire uh, piece of aluminum. It's probably 6061 is the grade T6. And uh, these fins down here also dissipate heat as small as they are. So this whole thing is a heat sink for what is inside. And what is inside is probably a programmable IC or chip. It might be more than one. Uh, there's also some power transistors in here to dis uh, distribute the uh, energy that's being displaced by the battery. So this is really important to dissipate heat from. And how they mounted it in the original bike, uh, the original way it was mounted, it was mounted here at one side. So I'm going to mount it directly in the center um, on this pan, or close to center. And it's going to sit on these end caps. These end caps are slightly stepped up from the bottom. It would be nice if they were machined flat uh, so it could sit directly on this uh, bottom portion of the, the aluminum extrusion. But however it isn't, but I believe because it's about, a, it looks like about a 30 seconds of an inch, that it's close enough to this pan that with the airflow coming around here, and um, it will dissipate heat using this bike, since this whole bike is 6061 T6. All right, so what I have done here is I've installed two straps on the bottom, four straps on the top. These straps here are the straps that came with the bike. They're the ones that strapped all the foam on. I disconnected them and I kept them. So, because um, I knew I'd use them somewhere down the road later. So those are my bottom straps. Uh, the bottom two straps on this, um, I want you to note that it runs to the inside and up. So it will go through the inside where the battery is, up through the slot, and then it will come out like so. So you can get access to the strap from the back side. Now these straps here, uh, these two straps here, they are running up and over. So what is going on here is I have a strap that goes up, down and around the bottom strap, back up and over. Same with this side, it goes down around the bottom strap, up and over, down and around, back up and over. None of the straps, none of these four back black straps run underneath the uh, CPU. They all run over the top. And I want you to take note that there is no rattles. This thing is solid. It's not going to go anywhere. When you install the CPU, you need to install this as far back as you can, right before the screws touch this uh, top support member. The reason is, is you don't want to pinch any of these wires right here. Also, when doing these straps, I want to take note that I use a pair of needle nose pliers and I bend the strap to form it. I form all my straps before I install them. If you look at this strap, uh, you'll notice the head runs parallel with the body, with the, with the strap itself. And this one is bent at 90 degrees. I take a needle nose pliers, I pinch it right here, and I fold this over so I can get a nice 90 degree. Do that on all of your six straps, the two white ones and the four black ones. And that should take care of um, strapping it. It makes it a lot easier. It also allows a nice flush mount here. So when you install the battery, you will not have any interference from straps. Now when the seat is mounted on this uh, bike, 
you have an induction system coming right through the center here. The air is passing right through up and over and then out the back. Previously, I have been talking about the PCU, which is the power control unit, this box, as version one and version two. Now I am talking about version three. When I installed the display um, into this bike, it would not fire up. It uh, The screen broke up and it would not work. It would fire up and then it would turn off. And in discussing that with Zugo, we have come to the conclusion that what was at fault was the cabling that powers the display. This cable in the grommet becomes extremely uh, firm. Uh, it is stiff like wire. It is not forgiving. This grommet is like a hard plastic grommet uh, that becomes very brittle. So actually the cable is very pliable and so is the grommet. But when, when in cold uh, temperatures, it becomes extremely brittle and um, difficult to remove without damaging your bike. And you have to be able to get that big connector through, the, through this tube and out this port. So what I did is I used a variable temperature heat gun and I put it on a low temperature and I heated this entire tube and this cable and this grommet. Now you can also do this with a hair dryer. One thing I did not discuss is routing the cable up uh, and hooking it up into your handlebars, your brakes, uh, your display, and your control unit. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. I would just take a picture of your current setup before you dismantle it and just rewire it exactly the same way and it should turn out just fine. The connectors plug in really easy. What I did do is I took some canned air and I blew the connectors out really good before I hooked everything Showed back The up. difference between the stock class speed to the upgraded class four speed. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the bike on. First, I'm gonna kick it up on its kickstand to get the rear wheel off the ground and support it with my hand. And I'm gonna turn the display on. One thing I've noticed with this new version 3 controller, my headlight comes on automatically when I power on the display. Now with my version 1 that I had before, that didn't happen. I had to power it on manually. So that's kind of a nice feature. And I'll just power it off um, when I'm not using it. I think that's really cool. So first we're going to do stock speed and then we're going to upgrade to class 4. And this is what it looks like. So here's the stock speed, about 19.7, 19.8, and now here's class four. I think that's gonna be a lot of fun, and I'm gonna have a great time with this bike. So glad that I have upgraded my bike to this level and pleased with the experience. Zugo has been absolutely uh, right on top of this to uh, help me through this project. Uh, very informative, uh, supplying me with parts, and there's been a great learning experience for all of us on this, uh, upgrading this uh, early bird to a newer level.